y'all welcome back to my channel and welcome to those of you who are new my name is Tori and this is at home with Tori and today I am going to be showing you guys how I reconcile my budget every single month I've had quite a few requests to show how I use the budget mom budget by paycheck workbook and how I use her monthly budget category breakdown to reconcile my budget and just make sure that I am coming out the way that I should and that I'm not short or over in any way. If you guys do not know, I purchased the budget by paycheck workbook from the budget mom and I did this before I made my own budget sheets so I want to get my money's worth out of it so I'm making sure to still use it on the side. I believe I purchased this for $30, somewhere around $30 before shipping and that's kind of expensive if you think about it. However, at the time I was really just trying to support the budget mom because she had just um, launched her budget by paycheck workbook. This is the newer edition. Um, so I did make a second purchase. The first time I ordered the actual physical copy, but the second time that I did it, I did the download file so I could print it off as needed. Had I thought about it the first time around, I would have done that the first time around Now I wouldn't have had to purchase another copy, but I didn't and here we are. So anyway, <laughs> After I purchased this is whenever I actually started doing my own budget sheets and doing things a little bit similar but a little bit different, um, just working it around my budget style. So if you want to get the budget sheets that I make, if you're interested in that, I also have an expense tracker. I'll link my Etsy shop down below and you can go check it out over there. But for today, I am using the Budget Moms Budget by Paycheck workbook, which I will also leave down below. Okay, so when I first started reconciling my budget with the Budget Mom, I was not coming out even. I was not breaking even and I could not figure out why. Because now I can do it and I usually come out, you know, within a couple cents. But when I was doing it before, I was having a lot of trouble. So the only thing I can figure out is that when I was trying to put my income in, I got really confused and I wasn't counting everything as income. But that's the one thing with her, the way that she reconciles is that you have to count everything as income. Even if you're just transferring money from a sinking fund over, you count it as income. Otherwise, it doesn't reconcile correctly. So that's one tip I have for you when trying to reconcile. So um, over here to the side, you can see that I have these categories. What the Budget Mom does is she uses a black pen and then uses highlighters, but I actually have a ton of pens from Parku, and these are just a couple of them. I have so many more, but um, there's so many different colors that I figured I would just use those instead. So instead of using a highlighter method, I use like a colored pen method, and that works out well for me. If you're interested, these... Um, so I have two different kinds of pens. These ones are quick drying gel pens and these ones are erasable pens. And these ones I really liked because you've seen in my previous videos, I make a lot of mistakes. So instead of having these wide out, you can just use the erasable pens, but I'm actually, my ink is running low in almost all of these now, so I need to repurchase these. But for now, I use what I have and um, if you are interested in getting some pins, I will link Parku down below as well. They have a lot of really cool items and I'm going to show you some more of them coming up soon in another video. Okay, so you see I have my budget categories and then the monthly budget, which right here is where you're going to put the amount that you actually budgeted for, not how much you spent. How much you spent is going to go right here on monthly spent, then you calculate the difference and then you can see how much of your income you just divide this number by your actual income and see how much of the percentage you used in those categories. Okay, so right up here is the starting balance. Then she calls this incoming income. So basically anything that is considered income that you get within the month is going to be incoming income. It seems redundant, but whatever. And then you have your total monthly income. So you add the starting balance with your incoming income and that gives you your total monthly income. And the way that you figure out how much you've spent is by looking at your expense trackers. Now, I have two different banks that I use and then I also have my cash. And like I've said before, I have not been using my cash for the past probably two or three months since the whole pandemic has been going on just because I haven't been wanting to touch cash really. Um, I'll probably go back to that pretty soon. So you can see I only have one category or one withdrawal from my cash um, that has been left over from, I don't know, February I think was the last time I drew cash out. So anyway, so what you do 
is since I used the colored pin, I can go through and look and see that I had a Walmart pickup grocery for $86.29. And the reason that it's so easy for me to see my food categories is because I write them with my blue pen. So the blue pen allows me to know that this is for my food category. Um, and so when I write it down over here, you can see that blue is for food. I have a different pen for each category and it makes it really easy to look and see, oh, these are utilities or this is personal or this is income. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna look at your spending and then you're gonna write your categories down here. So I have food, utilities, personal, vitamins, school, and income. What you're gonna do then is you're gonna go through and you're gonna add up each individual category. So you'll add up all of your food purchases. And then when you get your total, you're gonna write your food total right here. And then you continue with each category. The way that I track whether or not I've added my expense into this total um, as I'm going along, I will put a little dot over here out to the side so I know that it's been counted. And then if I get to the end and there's something that's left blank over here, I know that I forgot to add it into my categories. So I do that with both of my accounts. And then as you can see, this is one bank and this is how it lays in my binder. Um, and then I add each bank up separately. So sometimes if it's overwhelming, I'll put like the categories over here and over here. But for this month, I just put them all right down here. So you add up all the categories and then you have your totals right down here. Another thing that's down here is sinking funds, which has to also go into your categories, it has to have a category on your, um, on your reconciling sheet because it is taken out of your budget every single month. It's taken out of your account. So it is going to be its own category. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take those totals and we're gonna add those up. So this food here plus this food here plus this food here. And then we're gonna write it right here on monthly spend. We're gonna start with our starting balance. And the way that you find your starting balance, you're going to look at the beginning balance of each month. Okay, so our starting balance is going to be 615, 19 plus 516, 47 plus 138. So our starting balance is going to be 1269.66. Then you're gonna take your incoming income which again, sounds very redundant to me, but that's what it is. So our incoming income is going to be, you look down here, cause I, I totaled up all of the income that's on the deposit side of the expense tracker. So we've got 1087.52 plus 7312.07 plus nothing on there. So that's going to be our incoming income, 83.99.59. So we're gonna write that here. And then you add those two together. And so our total monthly income is 96.69.25. And I forgot to write one more thing on here. I'm gonna write starting balance for June. And this is gonna be basically anything left over in your bank account after May 31st. This was another thing that I kept forgetting to do when I was first trying to reconcile my budget. I would forget to add in the starting balance for the following month and then there would be this abundance of money sitting in my account that I wasn't accounting for. We're gonna start with food first because it's the first one in our category. So 554.69 plus 205.00. 07 plus, and this is gonna be the only time I flip this over, $75. So 834 76 is going to be our monthly spent for food. Next is going to be our utilities. Utilities is going to be 32 34 plus 15 42 30. Okay, so 15 74 64. The next is going to be personal. So I've got 118.56 plus 154.84. That equals 273.40. Next is going to be miscellaneous. I don't have any miscellaneous here, so 402.40. 
Next is going to be vitamins, 78, 80, plus 15, 67, 94, 47. School, I think I only have once on here, is $256. Gifts is only one time on here, and that's $16. And these, some of these that are like in the darker color are sinking fund categories, so that's why they're darker um, and why there's only like one instance of them. Debt is only on here once, and that is 1180.14. Car maintenance is going to be 144.68. Household is 17.03. Sinking funds is going to be 15, and this is what I'm putting into sinking funds, not what I'm taking out. 15, 27, and then we have our start balance for June. So the start balance for June can be found at the end of your trackers. 662, 32, plus 26, 23, 41, plus whatever I have left in my cash, <laughs> 75. So that's going to be 33, 60, and 73 cents. So you see why this number is so important to not forget it, <laughs> because it would be a big difference. So now what you're going to do is you're going to add all of this up and write the total down. Okay, so I did make a small mistake that I didn't realize until just now. Um, and this happens to me a lot because my numbers are weird. Um, but whenever I was adding up my food categories, I added $75 instead of 63 because I looked at the ending balance instead of looking at the actual withdrawal. So I actually calculated this wrong. It should be 822.76. So let me write that down. Okay, so now, this number that goes down here in your total, the 96, 69, 25, should match this number right here. And mine does, so that means that I reconcile correctly and that we have an even balance. It's a little bit easier when you're using debit cards instead of cash, because the cash is where it can sometimes get uh, mixed up or lost in translation if you forget to write something down or whatever. But um, thankfully, because I've been using debit cards, things have been a little bit easier to track right now for me and I have reconciled. So now what you're going to do is you're going to go in and write your monthly budget in here. And the way that you're going to find that is you're going to take your budget sheets where you wrote down your budget and you're going to go and see what you budgeted for each category. So I'm going to plug those in real quick and then I'll check right back in with you guys. Okay, so I've written down all of my um, categories for the monthly budget. They look a little different just because these are going to be sinking funds, the ones that have lines drawn through them that we already had money sitting in the sinking fund. So technically we didn't budget for it or I could have written down the month, the monthly budget that we allot for it, but there's always more in the actual sinking fund than there is what shows that we used for it. So it's, it doesn't really make a lot of sense, but anyway. I'm going to go through with what I can and show you the difference of what we spent. And if we went over, I will write it in red. And if it is under, I'll write it in green. Um, or at least I'm going to try to. My pens are really running low. <laughs> All right, so my monthly budget for food was $700. And we actually spent $822.76. So that gives us a negative of $122.76. So we went over by $122.76. Yep, I don't think... Let me see, I'm gonna have to use my other red. 122.76. Okay, and then we go down to utilities and our monthly budget for utilities was 
and we actually spent fifteen seventy four sixty four. So we had a surplus of eight thirty six. Sorry, I wrote that line right down the middle. I won't do that again. <laughs> I wasn't thinking when I did that. Um, so personal and miscellaneous are two of our categories that we are terrible at actually figuring out our budget for. Um, I think I'm just in denial that we don't spend as much money as what we actually do. So I probably do need to actually up our budget as far as this is concerned. Um, so $80 is how much we actually budgeted for and $273.40 is what we spent. So that was an overage of $193.40. And miscellaneous, we budgeted for $175 and we actually spent $402.40. So that was an overage of $227.40. The only other thing I can do on here is debt, which looks like we overspent, but this is actually a good thing because that means there was extra money in our budget and we were able to pay off more. So I'm actually going to write this in green, even though I know it looks like it was overage because it wasn't. It was a good thing. So at $1,080.14. And then the same for savings. We allotted to save $405, but we were actually able to save $1527. So that gave us also $1122. So it looks like it's an overage, but really it's not because of the category that it goes into. If you wanna calculate um, how to figure out how much you actually spent of your income, you're gonna take um, your monthly spent, so $822.76, divided by, I'm sorry, 822.76 divided by your total monthly income, 96.69.25. And that will show you your percentage. So that was 8% of our budget was spent on food. For utilities, so 1574.64 divided by 96.69.25. So that shows me that 16% was spent on utilities. So that would round up to 3%. And then uh, miscellaneous is 402.40 divided by 96.69.25. So when you're looking at it, it doesn't look like that much, but you know, I mean, really, we don't need to be spending, but like maybe one or two percent on our personal and miscellaneous spending. So that needs to get under control. But when I look at debt, 1180.14 divided by 96.69.25, that shows me that 12% went to debt which is a good thing. And then savings, 57, uh, 1527 divided by 96.69.25, went to sinking fund. So I went ahead and did the rest of our budget. And as you can see, the biggest chunk of my budget is still in my start balance for June. And that is because we got paid at the very end of May. So this money is sitting in my account so that I can pay all the bills for June. So when you add it up, it comes up to 99% and that's just because these are worth some sort of percentage, but it's so little you can't really calculate it. If you don't wanna be spending you know, 8% of your income on food and you think it should be a lower amount, then you can adjust it and see how you can do better the next month. That is gonna be all for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button. If you are not yet subscribed to my channel, make sure you do so by clicking on this little house right down here, or you can click on the subscribe button on my channel page. And make sure that you hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Make sure to leave me some comments down below, guys, and let me know what you thought about this video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.